Have you ever had trouble nailing those combos under the pressure of competitive play? Ah! Are you having trouble with the Mario Maker level that doesn't have any checkpoints? Well, you should try the Gully Kit King Kong Pro for Windows PC, Android, and Nintendo Switch. Its flagship feature is the programmable button right in the middle that can record up to 10 minutes of your controller inputs to play back at any time. No more agonizingly long levels in Mario Maker. No more whiffing combos due to nerves. For the low price of $49.70, this might seem too good to be true. And that's because it is. <laughs> this controller actually came out a while ago, I think back in October. We first got a look at it at E3 last year where we got accosted by the team over at Gully Kit. Can I what? To, to, to take a photo with me? Not with the doc. At the time, they did a really good job of making me very interested in the controller, but I didn't get a chance to play with it until right now. I'm a busy man, I got a lot going on, all right? I was very interested to try out the macro feature. I had a lot of ideas for some pretty interesting use cases. My current favorite Switch controller, the SN30 Pro Plus, also has a macro button, but thumbstick inputs don't register and it doesn't record timings between presses, it just performs the sequence really fast. So that rules out a ton of use cases. That controller is also $50, putting it in the same ballpark. Inside the box is a nice case that looks very similar to the scuff case for their PS4 controller. This is an awesome addition. It's always great to have a solid case for traveling. More companies should do this. Inside the case is the controller itself, a USB-C cable for charging and syncing, some instructions, and a hard plastic card with the button layout and a guide to the settings options. You might notice right off the bat that it looks pretty similar to an Xbox One controller. Infringingly so. But hey, if you're gonna take that much inspiration from any controller, why not make it the best OEM controller on the market? So of course, the form factor feels really nice in the hands. It has this slight soft touch finish, which is susceptible to pizza grease. Why did I do this bit? The shoulder buttons have the exact same resistance as an Xbox One controller, although the finish is different. The face buttons are pretty similar as well. They're just not as rounded. The D-pad is a little softer and less clicky, and the thumbsticks are noticeably cheaper feeling. Overall, the whole controller is just a little cheap feeling. They definitely cut some corners in the manufacturing process, which is a little upsetting considering it's a $50 controller. But there's a lot more that could make up for it. Syncing is pretty simple. You can cycle through controller modes with the dedicated button right here. There's also a dedicated pairing button. The controller also stays synced to the console very well, which is more than we can say for a lot of other third-party controllers. It will not wake the system up from sleep though. So you will need another controller to wake it up or you need to press the power button. But after that, you can mash the buttons and it'll, it'll wake up the controller and resync itself right away. All right, let's get to the main attraction here, the macro button in order to set a macro, you need to just hold down on this button right here for three seconds. The controller will start vibrating for an absurdly long time, at which point you can't do anything. Once it's done seizing, you can start playing your game as normal for up to 10 minutes. When you're done with your recording, you can just press the macro button one more time. It will give you a short vibrate to let you know that it's done recording. Sometimes, after stopping the recording, it'll randomly start playing your macro or it might buffer some strange inputs. It's still a really cool feature to have with a lot of great use cases. I first tried using it with Smash Brothers combos. Directional inputs get recorded, so if your Smash combo requires directional inputs to work, you have to make sure you're facing the right way when you want to implement it. Unfortunately, it doesn't record the timing of button presses very accurately. This is most apparent with long combos. It's just a little off, but it's enough to whiff the whole combo. Short combos work great, but I mean, I could, I could just do those myself. Ganon's side B to down tilt works great, but you have to be facing the right way. 
Squirtle's down throw to up B is a perfect example because it will work facing any direction. The positioning of this macro button isn't ideal either. It's right smack dab in the middle of the controller, which requires a little bit of reach. It would have been better as a paddle on the back, which is a popular inclusion in a lot of these other professional gaming controllers these days. Because of the placement of the macro button and the fact that the timing of long combos is weird, using these macros online isn't very practical. Not to mention the macro button likes to spaz out sometimes and cause some weird inputs, which is magnified when you play Ganon because he's very susceptible to buffered inputs. And if you happen to miss that first hit of a combo, well, you're in for a wild ride and your opponent is gonna have a lot of questions. You can cancel a macro by pressing any face button. I find myself mashing every button in a panic until the macro stops. You can also kind of influence the macro by pressing a direction. This gets complicated and probably just causes more problems. Even if you completely ignore the inclusion of this macro button, it's still not a very good controller for competitive play. I have no proof, but I swear that this controller just misses inputs sometimes. Even more egregiously, the thumbsticks are calibrated very weird. This I do have proof of. It favors sideways inputs. It snaps to the left and right positions, which is normal, but not when you're that far away from the horizontal axis. I don't think I've ever come this close to putting a controller through the wall. I had a pretty grand idea to just let this controller play Mario Maker for me. I would play through a level, record a macro of it, and then when I'm done, just replay that macro again when I restart the level and see if it can complete the whole level. This didn't work. The long wait for the macro to start recording makes this very hard to do, and the timing of long macros is just too wonky. This is the best example of this issue. It always misses a jump somewhere around 10 seconds into the macro. It would be awesome to record a macro for World 1-1 so that when that level inevitably comes up in multiplayer versus, like it always does, you can just have a pre-recorded frame-perfect run of it to play out. Unfortunately, it doesn't make it very far past that fourth pipe, and it can't even make it into that fourth pipe. This is a strange issue that I hope gets fixed in a firmware update. They're currently on firmware version 1.1, and it Looks like you need a Windows computer in order to update that firmware, and I didn't feel like switching partitions. Chances are I probably have that firmware already anyway. It's only 1.1. So while I was editing this video, I actually found some use cases that work. The first one was something that I was excited about back at E3 when I first heard that this had a macro function, and I guess I just forgot about it, but it's labbing in Smash Brothers. If there's a certain move or combo that your opponent keeps doing to you and you just can't seem to get around, you can program the second controller, in this case the King Kong controller, to perform that function and you can practice reacting to it. Or better yet, you can use it for DI. Let's say you want to try out some combos and you want to anticipate which way your opponent is going to flick their stick to influence their direction. You can literally just set the macro to hold down one direction so you can practice if your opponent's gonna DI away from you or DI towards you. The game has some automatic functions like you could set the CPU to walk or to do their neutral B. But in this case, you can set it to always up B or you can set it to constantly spot dodge to see if it could get out of your combo. So this is something that actually seems useful to some of the Smash community. I know that there's a GameCube controller adapter that somebody made that constantly mashes the stick or mashes the buttons so that you can practice true combos. And instead of purchasing that adapter, you can just get this whole controller to do that. The other actual use case I asked AJ about because I knew that there had to be some function in Pokemon when you're shiny hunting that is just repetitive. And the only one that comes to mind is just walk around in a circle till your eggs hatch. Of course, once the egg hatches, you then have to press A to go through dialogue options. But you can record a macro that just walks around in a circle for up to 10 minutes. And it'll do that until either you hit the 10 minutes or you hit one of the dialogue options, meaning that your egg hatched. And once it's done, you go through the dialogue and you just 
press play again on the macro. So this controller goes up a few notches in my book because of these actual use cases. But if you're not interested in either of these use cases and you don't have any better ideas for something that you would be interested in, then reserve your judgment for this controller, I guess. There's a couple of other features with this controller. It has NFC, which is a little unusual for third-party wireless controllers. You can adjust the sensitivity of the triggers, which I'm a big fan of. I never really need them to register pressure, and the Switch Pro controller doesn't even have pressure sensitivity. I know the GameCube controller does, but... I only use that for Smash, and I don't want it in Smash. It also has this weird gyro assist aiming function. So if a game doesn't have motion controlled aiming, you can force it to? And I couldn't get it to work anyway, so. So should you get this controller over the more expensive Pro Controller? No. The Pro Controller is a, a better controller overall. And right now you can get it for only $55 on Amazon. That price changes all the time, so it might be different by the time you're watching this video. Should you get this controller over the other budget options? Maybe? There are better budget options out there, especially if you don't mind having a wired controller. But if you absolutely must have a wireless controller and you want that Xbox One form factor, then this is an all right option. They also make that May flash adapter so that you can legit just play your Xbox One controller on the Switch. The main feature here is that macro button. Even though it does have its flaws, I'm sure there's plenty of you out there who could find a perfect use case for it. It didn't really pass my Mario Maker test, and I couldn't really see any upside for using this controller in Smash Brothers, for me anyway. But maybe there's a game out there that you really wish you could have macros for. Maybe they can be useful for Smite, if you play a lot of Smite. But without that feature, it's just, it's an all right controller. Unremarkable, maybe, you could say. But anyway, what do you guys think of the Gully Kit King Kong Pro controller. Apparently there's an unpro version, but why would you want that? Does it give you any ideas? Is there anything you wish I would have tried out? If you had the option to record your inputs and then play them back, what would you do with it? Leave it in the comments below. Add me on Twitter, any and all of this other social media garbage. And as always, there's Amazon affiliate links to everything that we talk about, even the other controllers in the description below, and those help support us very greatly. Of course, we got new videos here all the time. Our schedule's usually in a pin tweet over on Twitter. We got Wolf there live every single Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time here on YouTube. And we got streams over on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. A lot of Mario Maker. In fact, if you have an idea specifically for Mario Maker, go over to Twitch, see if I'm live, and tell me to do it right there. I'll be more than willing to try out your ideas live. Oh, and uh, I'm, wearing a, I'm wearing a shirt you can get, I think, unless we're sold out. I'm sorry if we are. <laughs> But of course, the most important thing that you can do and the easiest thing is just subscribe. It's right there. And share this video with a friend, a friend that this controller might help out. Maybe they have trouble with some games and want to record some of their gameplay. Or they're in, just in the market for a third-party controller. Thank you guys very much. You have yourself a good week. I appreciate you very much. Yeah, just give me a hug.